So I'm starting with that with my bike with no modifications. This is running the factory firmware, latest version. It's running 2.6.53. That's the current latest version. Uh, it's still got privilege mode set to on, so I can't get into the Android subsystem. It works just like it was designed to work uh, out of the box. It's currently uh, set to run at high quality. Being to force it to high, uh, it will not actually run at high quality with these very latest versions, of course. But uh, I think that you can you can reproduce this at home very easily. Just force the video quality to high, see whether or not you get the same results. If you do, you have the same problem. And this is a workaround. It's it's not a good workaround. They need to fix their software, but it is a workaround. Uh, at this point, I'm going to let it count down. Uh, I just like to, as I mentioned in my previous video, I, I do like to, to try to keep things consistent. So I'm giving it the 40 seconds, uh, which is what the version 2.6.32 software takes anywhere from 20 to 40 seconds for it to buffer uh, for the high quality video. Um, just giving it the benefit of the doubt here, just to, for consistency, it will not change anything. It doesn't matter if you press the, the, the in warm up instantly or you let it go, it's going to display the same way. So now we're proceeding with the ride. This is what they, this is what it set to high quality video. It's obviously not high quality video. It looks like something from a 1990s smartphone or something probably. Uh, it is not very good. It's it's granular. It's it's pixelated. It's obviously not full resolution, uh, and you will notice a number of uh, frame skips. Uh, it's just not smooth. It's not as smooth as it's supposed to be, uh, and, and it, it, quite frankly, it's, it's not as smooth as it can be, which is the sad part. I know this bike is capable of of doing it. There's been some speculation online uh, that the hardware is just not up to to spec. The hardware is very very borderline engineered. It is very low end, but it will run this video just fine if the programmers will fix the problem. Um, so as you can see, this this just, it looks like garbage. Um, you're going to notice, if you look carefully, you'll notice where it is is not only, it's just not really smooth. It's, it's okay, but it's not all that smooth. But you're going to see sometimes where it will actually skip some frames. It's more evident than uh, some other videos I've had here, but you, you can notice it. It's just, it's not clean. Um, this is not something that can be worked around in, doesn't matter whether you set it to automatic, high, it doesn't matter. I, I have not found anything that would resolve this, yet the other version of the software does not have this problem. So now we're just going to stop the video, and I'm going to show you, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how my system, how to get into privilege mode, and then how to do some other steps. So the first thing I'm showing here is it's not in privilege mode. If it was, we could swipe up and it would do this. You have to tap 10 times on the white area here. Uh, you can tap them really fast. You can tap them slow. It doesn't seem to matter. The biggest thing is the spacing between them has to be about five to seven seconds. And then you tap another 10 times. And then at this point, it's going to say privilege mode to true. You can now use this just like any other Android. It functions the same way. Swipe up and you'll get the navigation buttons. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop the icons over here so they're easy to access for the browser and for the settings to show you uh, some, some other things here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go back to setting, and I'm going to show you my connection speed. Uh, it is currently connected at 72 megabits data rate. That is the fastest data rate this bike will allow. They used a very low-end wireless in adapter. It's the lowest speed wireless in you can get, uh, and it is uh, is very old technology. Now we're going to navigate over to apkpure.com. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to do the speed test first. So now we're going to do the speed test just to show you what I'm getting uh, as far as my bandwidth to show that I do not have any network problems. The maximum data uh, download speed that you can possibly get with a 72 megabit data rate is about 40 megabits per second. I'm getting well within the expected range. So now I'm just closing the applications. I do this out of habit because this console is not very stable. If you have multiple things and you're bouncing back and forth, uh, eventually you may end up finding that it will lock up. Uh, typically only locks up when you're launching the iFit application, but I just have gotten in the habit of this. Uh, I navigated to apkpure.com. There's plenty of locations on the internet where you can find this APK. 
uh, is the same one that runs on the Android tablets. It happens to also be coded in the same way that it will work with a bike. Uh, click on this uh, uh, on the icon iFit Health and Fitness app. Scroll down and you will see the other versions. Now at this point you're going to click more and you're going to find version 2.6.32. This is the last version that worked correctly. This version has great video, no issues, no complaints. Uh, you know, they, they've added all sorts of wonderful new features to the iFit app, and I actually love iFit. I just want it to work correctly. Um, but they've added all these new features and yet somehow overlooked to fix something that is a critical part of the service, which is your experience, the video quality, uh, and, and, all, and smooth video. Uh, it, it's, it's been kind of surreal waiting for them to fix something that is such an obvious bug as far as I'm concerned. Uh, or it's a design issue. It's maybe they've, they're doing this intentionally, and, and if so, then that becomes a whole other problem. Uh, anyway, we're going to, we've downloaded the app APK, and now we're going to go ahead and install it. Just like any other Android APK, you just run the install, let it do its thing. Now, what will happen is uh, once you've installed the APK for the first time, almost every time that I've done this, uh, possibly every time, I didn't keep track, uh, you cannot load this app directly and have it come up. It will freeze. It will you know, start looking like it's going to work, and then the screen's going to go white. Uh, oh, and you will have this pop up. Don't worry about changing the default. It won't take. Just click OK. It's just so it can communicate with the bike. Uh, anyway, it is going to... It did it during this sequence. It did lock up. It will flash a few times. You'll click the button, uh, or I'll click the button here, and it would flash, and then it would just lock up. Uh, don't panic. There's nothing wrong with the bike. You haven't done anything. that It can't be undone. All you have to do is reset the bike. It's going to come right back up now, and it's going to go back into its factory firmware. But as you see, it's going to flash the Android uh, system first, and then it's going to go in. That's because it's in privilege mode. Uh, but it will always load... The, uh, the actual factory firmware and get you up into the factory version of iFit uh, by default. You actually would have to, to exit the application by using the um, uh, task switcher and, and swiping to the right to get rid of it before you launch the other version of the iFit. But I'm going to show you that. As you can see, it's loading up the, uh, the factory version. This is, again, version 2.6.53. Uh, everything is in place. It's working fine. There's no issues. You could run it if you wanted to. But for what we're trying to do here, we're going to get out of this, and I'm going to show you uh, how, to, how to set things up to be able to run the other one. So it normally, as far as I know, it always installs as the APK, the, the one that you're going to want for the new version installed is the one furthest to the right, so this one over here. And I just drag them down in the taskbar and I try to keep them separated, so I keep the factory version on the left and I keep the, uh, the 2.6.32 over to the right. You can do it however you want, that's just to keep it organized because it will drive you nuts when you're trying to uh, use the same icon, it looks exactly the same, and you're trying to figure out which one to launch. So we're going to go in again, um, and I have I'm going to have to, uh, to, to uh, basically skip part of this because it comes up to require me to log into the credential with my credentials. And, of course, I did not want to expose those. So we're going to go to the login screen, and then we're going to, you're going to see it transition over to the next sequence. So now, back up and running, I've finished logging in. And I'm going to show you this is version 2.632 running on this bike. There we go, 2.6.32. So now we're going to go into the end workout, and I'm going to show you the high quality and how it's supposed to behave, how it should look. I'm running the same ride, same workout. Okay. 
and now you will see it is going to buffer. This is the way the app is supposed to behave. I mean, uh, I don't know if there's a way of, of not having to buffer and buffering in the background, because if your connection's fast enough, it probably could do that. But they want to have a 60 second buffer before the ride, it has to fill up the buffer for 60 seconds of video before the ride can continue. I know this from buffering issues I've experienced in the past. So I'm presuming it is buffering one minute of the video uh, and then you'll get going. So long as your connection is stable, obviously if it takes 40 seconds for you to buffer one minute of video, then it's going to be able to continue keeping that buffer full and you won't have any issue. So we're clicking in warm up now. And we're going to get going. As you can see already, it looks so much better. It's very clear in comparison. And you don't have the uh, compression issues and the artifacts in the screen. And if you look closely, pay attention to the video, you will see not only does it look better, it's smoother. The entire ride is smoother. It is, it is much easier on the eyes because you don't have any of these stuttering frames, uh, this just uh, skipping unstable behavior that has been present in the more recent apps. And I have to say, I, you know, I really actually do love my bike, I, and I love the iFit software. I just don't love it after version 2.6.32. Uh, they, they've done a wonderful job of engineering the software, but yet for some reason, the most basic part of it, the thing that is most critical of to be able to stream the video well, they broke. Don't understand what's going on. I have some theories and speculations, but I have no proof of anything of what's going on. I just know that when you call support, uh, they will put every roadblock they can in place to prevent you from escalating the matter. Uh, that, to me, throws up a red flag. Uh, most companies, you say, I need to speak to a manager, and they're going to get a manager for you. Them. You even asked them, I even asked them yesterday to confirm that the email I sent was actually received by the person who was going to get it. And the first thing they did is says, oh, let's troubleshoot your issue. What, what's going on? And they started trying to go down the same path again. And they even got to the point of saying, oh, maybe you need a static IP address. Maybe that'll help. And I'm like, you know, you're not getting it. I'm sorry. But, and, and, I, and I understand these customer service reps. They don't, are not giving all the information. They're doing the best job they can. But any technical person is going to look at this and understand that changing your IP address is not going to change the application behavior unless it's coded to do that. And that would be ridiculous because you have to do, you can't by default change to a static address without knowing what you're doing. Uh, in any case, what I just demonstrated here was uh, that I tried to load one of the newer workouts. The problem with running version 2.6.32 is that the newer workouts will not load. Uh, anything that has been released in the recent months, good luck. You know, you're, you're not going to be able to run it. It's, what it's going to do is it's going to say loading workout, then it's going to say canceling workout. Uh, there's no way around this. I mean, they've just coded it on the back end to require a particular version of the software, meaning that you can run the older version of the software or, or older workouts, but uh, you will not be able to run any of the newer workouts until they fix their software, uh, unless you want to use the horrible version that they have that will give you a headache while riding practically. So again, I just want to show that this is running the version 2.6.53 software, the factory version, or most current version, I should say. And we're going to run the same one, same workout, that will not work on 2.6.32. And just to show you that it does work on the, the uh, current version, but it also looks unacceptable. As far as I'm concerned, you'll see a number of uh, frame skips. You're going to see uh, low quality video, and you be the judge. So, again, we're going to let it count down a bit just to 
for fairness. It is still forced to high quality video. Again, if you set it to auto, it will look better than forcing it to high, which is silly. But uh, it will look better. It just will not look very good, and it will still have these same frame skips. So away we go. So now we are able to load this workout uh, because it's the current version. But as you can see, not very good looking at all. It's it's just very low quality video. Pay close attention, you'll see, you can feel it. It's just, it's, it's, it's jerky. It's not a nice smooth flow to the video. You can get the nice smooth flow of the video in the version 2.6.32, so this is not a hardware limitation. I, I really originally was thinking maybe it's the hardware, maybe Nordic Track did not put in high enough hard, uh, high end enough hardware in it. It is very low end hardware. It is, it is not what you would expect in a $2,000 bike by any means. At the same time, it will serve its purposes if they can get the software working as well as it worked in the past. I do believe that they have borderline engineered it, so future enhancements and updates and everything they have pile onto it, it may be pushing its limits. I don't really know. Uh, I mean, certainly bandwidth-wise, so long as you've got a perfect connection, you've got to do, you've got to work hard to get your connection set up so that you make sure you can get it at maximum throughput. Uh, to, to cover the bases. I found that 20 megabits or higher will work satisfactorily without buffering um, on the uh, high quality mode on 2.6.32. So you don't really have to have the full bandwidth, you have to have at least half of it. But you know, to eliminate issues, get it as stable as you can. So now at this point, I'm just showing you that uh, how to re revert the whole thing. Uh, you, you've gone through these steps, you can run it, you can switch these apps, but here's version 2.6.32. We're going to just going to uninstall it, and I'm going to show you how to put the bike back exactly the way we started. So now it's uninstalled. We're just going to switch this back, and we're going to load the uh, current version of iFit. So it's running the firmware version now, not the software that I side loaded. So now I'm showing it's still in privileged mode, and we're going to tap. Now, I did this three times. So intentionally, first time, I, I left it a little long. I wanted to show you that if you leave it too long and you tap again, it's not going to work. But then I tried to get the timing right, and I, I, I messed up. I didn't get the timing right on the second time here. Uh, so it was a little bit more of a demonstration than I intended. You have to get the timing right. But the good part is you can just keep tapping on it. You're not going to do any harm. You just keep tapping until you get the sequence right, until you get the timing right, and then it will go into uh, to, to put it back in privilege, or sorry, to turn off privilege mode. So now at this point, it is not in privilege mode. You cannot access the navigation bar. You cannot access anything to install the apps or your other apps, for that matter. So this is just to put it back the way it was, to undo anything you've done, and it is now back up and running.